Hello and welcome to Bees on Main in beautiful downtown Stoughton. I'm Rich Morris, lead drone here at Broodminder, and I want to show you uh, a little bit more about uh, calibrating uh, scales, W3s, W4s, DIY, uh, any of the scales, the newer scales that we make uh, that have this larger XLR board. Uh, so we added the ability to do it within the app so you don't need to buy the uh, Bluetooth dongle anymore. So it's uh, pretty cool. I will include how to use the PC app and the Bluetooth dongle at the end. We still use it here because it's a lot faster for us. If you got a bunch to do, uh, that's a better way to go. So what uh, we do is uh, open up the app and you can see here I've got a couple of scales uh, in the area and this one's 0307 so I'm going to say show details and then click the three dots up at the top troubleshooting and calibrate scale so this and we have a little warning here because you can screw things up it won't quit working but it'll read funny and you know we can help you out of that if that happens so what we're seeing now are real-time weights coming out of the scale and you can see this one's already sort of calibrated uh, if I pick it up you know it's got yeah, zero pounds and everything so we see the four sensors J1 J2 J3 and J4 uh, we can also scale all the channels at once so if you just want to uh, correct like uh, one of the W scales and make it a little bit more accurate you can scale it and it'll change everything at once and for using our procedure here we'll set all the divisors to 32,000 now we made a spreadsheet out there that uh, the links in the procedure uh, that you can fill out this information it'll do the calculations it does the linear algebra to figure out uh, the scale factor for each of the sensors at the end of this so the first thing and the procedures right here in it so the first thing we're going to do uh, this is our new H scale for next year so you're getting a preview of that uh, we want to tear so we're going to tear them all four sensors and that adjusts the zero value for all the sensors so you know take all the weight off um, and then do that and now all of that should be reading zero which it does down there at the bottom you can see now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to set the divisor for all the channels to 32,000 so we're going to set that and that just gets a good starting point uh, you can fill in the values in the uh, as it reads it from the system here in the spreadsheet uh, but we start at 32,000 just because that's around the range of what we expect the divisors to be uh, if you run this procedure multiple times you can actually get better and better as you go along by using the values it comes up with okay so now we're there and we're going to let's see here now we're <laughs> okay had to think there for a minute um, so using a known weight record the readings for each load cell at the four corners uh, and we need to include the weight of the two by fours here um, and when we move this weight around we've got a 33 pound weight some people use a case of case of beer if you want uh, as long as you have a known weight and that you're going to enter into the spreadsheet too I know that for us it's a 33 pound weight and the two by fours are 4.28 pounds so that's a total of 37.28 and what I'm going to do now and we'll speed it up is move this to all four corners and record the values on my spreadsheet of what the readings are So you'll see 9.48, 2.75, 30.79, and 2.83. And I'll do this for all four corners.
Okay, so I've recorded all those. Uh, you'll want to, you want a good spread uh, between all the numbers, and you want everything to be good and level. The more precise and level you are with all of this, the better the calibration will be. Uh, it's all just math, so if you do a good procedure, it'll turn out good. Uh, and it's pretty easy to not do a good procedure. Uh, we know that from a lot of experience. So now I'm going to go to my computer, make those calculations, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I've filled out my spreadsheet and got the values in the computer, and now I have the divisors which are calculated. So I want to go in and change those. So J1 is 4, 1, 6, whoops, 6, 5, 4, and set. And you have to set these all one at a time. Uh, because every time you set it, it reads them back to make sure everything's right. So if you change them all and then hit set, except for the one that you hit, uh, they will not change. Anyway, uh, so 3, 6, oops, 3, 6, 3, 6, 2. 3, 6, 2, set. Now they are all set, and we see the values 3896. Right. And as we move it, we see those values. So 37.15, uh, 37.28, close enough for me. Um, so that's how you do it. Uh, if you only have a single load cell, you can use this screen also to control the divisors. Is basically taking the number, uh, we have a 24-bit A to D analog to digital converter, and we take the number that it comes back with, divide it by this divisor, and that's where we get the scale factor. So the bigger you make the divisor, the smaller the result will be. It's a little in, you know, backwards from intuition, but if you look at the uh, manual, it sort of tells you how that works. So hopefully that... Uh, clarify some things you know we're always here to help uh, support at broodminder.com and remember every hive counts here's the pc program uh, and the pc program we make no apologies for it's a uh, we've used it for a lot of years uh, it's a little bit twitchy it seems it works really well you know once you get the rhythm of it and everything and you know we use it for a lot of different reasons so you can see the, it came up here, uh, 49026A. This line is telling you the firmware version, well, the model number, the firmware version, battery level, the number of samples it's taken, the temperature. If the temperature is wrong, then you know something's wrong with the board. Uh, the humidity, which is zero, because so, we don't have a humidity sensor on here, and the weight. Since it's non-calibrated, it's showing minus 60 pounds, which isn't unusual. Now what we'll do is we'll go to calibrate the weight and you'll see uh, when it down here at the bottom it tells you the connection status it tells you that it found the Bluetooth the blue giga Bluetooth uh, module on COM3 in this case it looks for that automatically and then it looks for whatever device is listed in this window down on the lower left hand corner device to connect to. Once it's connected, then you'll see it come up and you'll see it, uh, you know, give the status up here in the right hand corner and the values that it reads down in the right lower right hand corner. OK, so now we're going to hit count W2 up here at the top that button and it's going to do a zero reading. So it's changing its mode so that instead of reading pounds, it's reading the binary values out of the sensors. 
And you can see here in the top row, now it's read them. It waits for everything to stabilize. And it knows what zero is now. The rest of the display, let me put this here. Okay, so the rest of the display, uh, the next eight lines, nine lines, are as it's doing its calibration sequence. Uh, they'll go down automatically if you use something like a 30 pound weight, 30 or 50 pound weight. It'll go through automatically. If it doesn't, you can push the button over here on the right hand side that says grab. And it doesn't matter what order you do them, when you have all the zero and the, the left front, right, left rear, right rear, right front, when you have values for that, then if you're doing it manually, you can say calculate W2, and it'll calculate the offset and the slope for all the different uh, sensor values. And then you can say update W2, and it will save it. Now what you'll see me do, it does all automatically because we set it up so that we could do a lot of these and it will look, so as you look down the list here, offset and slope aren't calculated yet. In that case, we use a default value that we know is close just so that we can see that uh, things are basically working. Uh, you know, it's just a standard value for each of the sensors. And what that lets us do is see the zeroed values below in the binary, in the uh, decimal, but uh, in the units of the A to D converter. The delta is from one sample to the next. Delta is telling you how much it changes. So you see as I just go through this a little bit. Okay, if I let it stabilize, then they all go, they can fall in values. And you can see if I push the left front here over on the left side, it went up to 318,000 minus 318,000. Then it came back up. As I let go, it's coming back up. We use that so that we don't collect calibration values unless it's really stable. So as things settle down and the sensors, you can see they all go clear and now it will collect a value. Um, the scaling of these is basically, you can see in the uh, line below, like 116 was 0.071 pounds. So they're really accurate A to D conversion and all that. So we wait for it to be under 200, either plus or minus 200, and then we collect the values in the automatic mode here. So we've got zero. I know that the weight of my board and the weight of my 33 pound uh, tractor weight, I think it is, came from Dwayne Kaufman, uh, is 40.85 pounds. Uh, I measured that a bunch of different ways and now we put it over the left front and you can see the zeroed value came up to 26.5 pounds on that one. And the other ones have some weight on them too. And what we do is the software looks for that to be, I think, over 20 pounds. And then it says, oh, okay, as soon as it's stable, collect it. Then I move it back to the left rear. And if you watch the left rear values, it went to 26. And as soon as those delta values aren't green or red, okay, so they're all under 200. Now I go back to here, and same thing, you see them get really big, but then settle down pretty quickly. And as soon as they all go clear, it'll automatically grab it. Like I said, you could push the grab button uh, up beside that row, but because we're doing these and moving all around, we'd like it to work automatically. And don't wiggle around too much or it does. Now, if it never settles down, then you've got an electrical problem and something isn't working right. Okay, and we do the last one here for calibration, uh, the right front. Um, and once it gets the right front, it'll calculate 
automatically the offset and slope and you'll see those and every time it does this it's writing the results to the file that's down in the lower right hand corner so you can see this one is 49026 and uh, the date and then the time dot CSV okay so now it's saying move to the left so after we calibrate based on the four corners then we do a test by basically putting it on the sides which is telling us that these two sensors are calibrated right and before you do all this you can see on the real weight I entered the real weight uh, which is 40.85 like I said I measured and then after it does calibration it's saying okay if we're within I think it's half a pound two tenths of a pound I don't remember um, if it's within that of 40.85 oh I gotta move back to the right then it will highlight it green if it's off it highlights it red which is again just a, something we do for our production to make it easy for our students who eventually put these together to tell whether it passes or fails okay so we got it's looking good on all those and so it's now using the offset and slope values which like I said they're recorded also in in a file so that if we want to if something is wonky we can look at those and see what what that is uh, usually what happens is some of the wires are reversed fix that uh, every once in a while we have a bad sensor um, and we can you know it's usually because we pulled on it too hard or something stupid like that okay so now we're all calibrated and we've proven that the values look decent so what I'm going to do now is push update W2 and it's now going to take these values the offset and slope for each of these and transfer it into the flash memory of the device and you can see it's sort of stopped doing everything and we know it's done because it then switches it back to uh, weight mode where it's reading in pounds and I can see that it reads 40 point 68 40.71 so everything transferred right it's now running like it would when you put it in the apiary uh, at this point you can you know you can move move it around and and see um, you know how how well it does as the weight shifts between the different ones you can take that off it should go back to zero um, you can push on them so that completes the calibration so I uh, hope everything works good for you you know like I said uh, we've got a lot ex of experience with it uh, using the linear algebra approach to do the calibration seems to work really well we're happy with that and uh, best of luck and you know do a lot of these and get them on your hives and and have fun and I guess I have to end it with remember that every hive counts.